Stamps are a powerful way to add surface detail and visual interest when you're coming to the end of your modeling. So obviously you can paint textures, but it would be great to be able to affect the surface, the surface geometry. So stamps is one of the ways that we can do that. So we're gonna walk through that this week and take a look at a few different ways to add black and white images as alphas and then use them as stamps. Before we dive right into stamps in Nomad, I just wanted to let you know that there's a little bit more information about our new Nomad iPad sculpting course for beginners at the end of this video. So once you've watched the video about stamps, then just stick around for a few seconds and just take a, a listen to what we've been doing with the course and more information about what content there is in there. So this week we're going to look at stamps and we're going to look at how we affect the surface of something with really cool black and white images, um, sometimes called alphas and quite often called stamps. So before we do that, let's have a look at some primitives and get some primitives on screen. And these are the primitives we're going to put the surface detailing on. So if we go to our topology panel, if we go to our scene panel, and first of all, we'll pick a cylinder. And that gives us uh, just a basic cylinder like so. Um, if you want to follow last week's video, you'll see the model that's in the scene there is what we used for the voxel remeshing. And you can learn how to do that um, by, by going back to that video. But for this week, we're going to focus on, on this end of it and, and this ability to use stamps. So let's first of all get one of the metallic looking materials. So we'll just pop that on we have to make sure that we are using a PBR material so it's physically based rendering or it won't work and then what we have to do is make sure that it's validated and then we can just force paint it all and there we go we've got a metallic looking um, material on there but what we haven't got is let me just show you we haven't got a very high detailed uh, geometry and I did that deliberately. We could have done that in before we validated it, but I wanted to show you what this what this does. So if you try to do what we're about to do with low res geometry, this is what you're going to get. So to use the stamp feature, what we do is we just call stamp. So we just let you go over to the panel, hit stamp. If you look down at the bottom right, you've got all of your stamps in here. Now you might only have, let me see, I think it's you'll just have these top lines here. So you have to collect up some new ones. And whether you get them from us, from the initial pack that we gave away, or from online, or buy some, or make your own is, is the best thing that I would suggest. You, you need to put them in your Nomad stamps folder. And then one, on a reboot of Nomad, they will appear in here. So what we've got is all of these mechanical ones. And how do you, how do you even make those? So it's very, very simple. So you go to something like Procreate. This is another program on the iPad. This, this could be I, uh, Photoshop if you're on a PC, it could be on a Mac, it could be Affinity Photo, it could be um, a Manga Studio, it doesn't matter. If it's a bitmap program, which means it's just painting with pixels, what we call raster pixels, this this is the, the way we do it. So at the minute, I've got a uh, black background and I've just painted white squares on there. It couldn't be more simple. So um, you just literally paint on anything that you want to have raised off the surface or indented into the surface if it's the opposite of that. So with this thing on screen, I've just drawn some random cubes just by going, um, creating a shape and then dragging a white color into that shape. That's as simple as it gets. When you've got those, you export them. So you go um, share and you export a JPEG or a PNG is the usual one. And we would just put them in, we would say save the files, and we put them in our Nomad folder here. It's the, it's actually called the Alphas program, uh, Alphas folder, not the Stamps folder. Um, so put it in there, into Alphas. Um, we won't save ours because we've got quite a few saved already. And go back to Nomad. Now, when you do a reboot with Nomad, you'll find that they appear here in the bottom. So we've got that one there. Now, let's see what happens. So because you've got stamp chosen, you can literally just pull it out on the surface and it will affect the surface. So let me show you what happens. So that's what you get if you do it on that cylinder. What that's done is it's affected each of the surface normals. 
and that means that whichever way the polygon is pointing, that's called its surface normal. And most polygons only have one side either showing or, or not, and you can you'll learn that as you as you uh, develop as a as a, a CG modeler. Now we're looking at the side that is showing, and what that means is there's not many polygons, and and what that's doing is it's trying its best to project that that alpha onto the surface, but it can't do it because there simply isn't enough geometry to play with. So you can remedy that in a couple of ways. So let's just make sure we use orthographic, which we are, and then snap view. So you're seeing it from the top. So what we want to do is we want to increase the geometry. So first of all, you could just go to multi-resolution and go subdivide. That's now 10,000 polygons. Subdivide is now 40,000. Subdivide 170,000. Subdivide again is 600,000. Now this is an iPad um, a 2018 iPad Pro, so it's only got four gig of RAM. It's not a huge. It's not like the new ones with six gig and the new processors. So I'm using a you know middle of the road iPad Pro. Um, so it will depend on how powerful your machine is, how high resolution you can go. But I can comfortably go another one. I could comfortably go up to a, a couple of million on here if if needed. Um, and I, I will actually just to show you. It says 2.7 million. So now it's quite heavy. And just to be just just for the sake of getting rid of it, I'll just delete the lower. And that means there's just, there's no levels in there. There's just 2.7 million polygons. We'll turn this wireframe back off. It looks exactly the same as it did, but there's now a lot of polygons to play with. We'll go snap view. So we're back completely looking down from the top. And we'll take that same shape, make sure we're on stamp, and we'll just drag it out. And that looks very different. So it's still doing the same thing. It's still affecting the surface. But what it's done is it's gouged it right in. And it's not done too bad of a job. It's still very, very rough. And that's because it's pulled it out to, too far. And we don't want it to go that far. What we want it to do is just literally just hit the surface. Or more importantly, ra ra raise it up off the surface. We've just done it with sub uh, on, on the right hand side here. On. So if I turn that off and do it again, you'll see now that it's raised it up. And that's the difference, you're either gonna raise it up or you're gonna lower it down, depending on what you want to do. And if you were to do that on here, let's just click one of these other older models that we've got and just do it on the side here. You can see it looks really cool already, even, even in that way, which we wouldn't do a raise like that, we would probably do sub and do lower. We do it something like that. It's still too aggressive, it's cutting in too far. So one, we can bring our intensity right down to, you know, we'll go to one and just show you what happens here. So we'll go back to our circle, our cylinder, go snap view. Remember this is high, this 2.7 million here. And then we'll, we're on sub um, and we're on the incredibly low setting. So what does that give us? Drag it on, let it go, and there you go, it's much more subtle. But it's still too jaggy for my liking. So what you can do is you can affect your fall off in here. So you go up to the top, you go um, stamp stroke and pick another setting in here. So let's try something like, um, let's try one of these peak ones and just see what it does. And you'll see there, that's affected it in a very different way. And it means that there's a pinch point in the middle. So that may work for you. In, in this case, it, it isn't brilliant. Let's have a look at that on the side and this will show you much more clearly what I mean. Now, it's good to know that that's there because that could be really useful for a specific um, kind of stamp. There might be another stamp where we use that pinch point, but that's not, not gonna work for us. That's not something that we want. So let's just go for something like this one and We'll um, do a custom version, bring it right down at the bottom and let's add some points and I'm going to make it really low like this. And that gives us quite a harsh fall off at the edge. And then we'll see what that's done. So we'll try it on the top again. And there you go. So what that's done is it's given you a much lower profile. We're on a super low intensity anyway, remember, in fact, I can't remember if we did go all the way to one, but we'll try it one more time at one. And we'll try it on the side this time again. Let's just make it look a little bit better in perspective and see what happens. See, that's too low now. So let's go up a tiny bit. And there we go. So if we were to try that on our components now, let's see how that's worked. So double click on or click on the component with your pen. 
and there we go. That's a much, much nicer try turn sub off and go, we're raising it up. And that's giving you a much more subtle um, effect. Now, these components are all high res as well anyway. So, you know, you're getting that same effect as you're getting on the cylinder we're testing it on. But that is how you need to be doing it. So you need to change your fall off, maybe make yourself a new uh, a, a graph like this and just make it so it's a really flat, low profile. And then make sure your intensity is low, but not all the way down. And that'll give you what you need for these kinds of models. Let's just try that with other shapes. So let's try this one. This is like a, a, a doorway, like a grill. So we'll snap the view, go to orthographic, snap view, and then we're looking right down on it again. Let's just get it right in the middle. Snap the view. Um, we'll do sub again, just see what happens with sub. And then, oops, missed it. Uh, snap the view. I don't think I was on, um, I think I'd come off the stamp. Or did I? Let's have a look. Ah, we weren't on the model, that was it. So on the model, snap the view and drag, and let's see what happens. Wasn't quite in the middle there. And again, wasn't quite in the middle. There is no snap feature there, unfortunately, for snapping to the position. And there you go, that will give you a really nice, um, yeah, well, like that hatch effect. Um, still, I'm still not happy with the position. So there we go. And that, and let's do it on the side just to prove it to you. That looks nice. And then maybe on this end here, let's click on the model. And you can see there how useful this would be. Once you start building up a pack of um, alphas that work for you, you're going to be able to build uh, really, really nice sets of designs that would work for your, certainly for your hard surface and your mechanical parts um, it's a great way to add surface detail i'm going to try different ones now that these are one just ones that i've made um, this is much more of a, of a uh, what we call a greeble panel so um, you see much more science fictiony there and this would look very different if i didn't have the metal look so let me just prove that to you so let's just go to a matte cap which is not physically based rendering, but look now, it's completely different, but it's showing that surface detail really well now. And now you can start going a bit crazy. So if you want to make the Starship Enterprise this afternoon, then go ahead and just build yourself some cylinders and get this kind of greeble effect on there. Try another one. Let's just go with something like red wax. So you can see, there you go. You can see it really, really well on the red wax. Um, click this one. And look at the surface detailing there. Now, don't forget these are all high res models. So you're gonna, if you want to use these as in your other programs, you're gonna need a high and a low poly and the maps. So you can you can do that work. That's much more than a beginner level kind of thing to talk about. That's much more something you'd be doing in Substance Painter or Blender or or ZBrush. But this gets you the ability to make these really nice surface details. I'll just show you one or two more. Just try this one. And we'll do him on the bottom here. Let's see what comes out of this one. And we'll let that one go over the edge and see what happens. So yeah, you can see how it goes up the sides there. So you can get, with, with, with this kind of process, you can get some really cool surface effects. So if you've already got the modeling down and you're sculpting and modeling in Nomad and you've got it working really well, this is a thing where you could add on nice features. It's not, it's not something that you would do in isolation. Um, and you can make your, you, this is obviously being showed here on mechanical parts, but just think about it in terms of armor and um, detailing anything like jewelry. So if you want to do swirls and patterns and different shapes on, on the surface, there's, there's lots of options that you can use this for. And obviously one thing that you're gonna bear in mind is that you might want to use a skin alpha as well. So if you do the same thing on here, I wouldn't use it here obviously, but the skin alpha would be pretty much the same let me just show you there you go obviously that's elephant skin on a mechanical model so you wouldn't want that but it's just to prove that you can do it so after the video i decided to make the uh the enterprise um, that i mentioned in the earlier bit so what i did was um uh, I did about a half an hour build, which is this one in front of you. And I'll speed ramp it now and show you how I went about making it, which will only take a few minutes. And then I'll show you um, me using the brushes um, or the alphas as stamps and how we basically 
lay them out on the surface. Even with a very quick build like this, you can get quite a nice effect. And it's ideal for concept art and for um, just for surface detailing models of this kind of nature, really. So the, the way we would start this is build it out with primitives. So we'll take a set of primitives, starting with, uh, I, mean, I didn't use any reference for this specifically. I had a quick look at a ship design, but we weren't aiming for any specific um, you know, the, a specific enterprise, so I'm not a Trekkie. What was that? Um, so I really, all I wanted was the basic shape. So I made a cylinder um, and a couple of spheres and then meshed them together. So that the, the, the saucer part is now one bit. I quickly um, made that shape that you see for the core body, um, which it, it doesn't really matter as long as you've got a rough shape to work with and um, because we're going to remesh it, it it's really just a holding shape and then a couple more cylinders uh, just one and then duplicate it uh, and then again with just with the move tool just bring them all together to get that rough volume um, of the ship so we're not looking for anything exact we're just looking for one of everything that would make the, the, the shape that we want and then take all of them parts merge them together so voxel remesh them together and just get some nice planes on them. Then the, onto the nacelles, which are the, the, the engines at the back. Um, and then just work on one side here. So just took a cylinder and just with the move tool, just, just basically pulled it out of the back and smoothed it at the front. Now, obviously these are all gonna have to be high res. So I already went high res with them because I knew I was gonna use things like trim and use things like, obviously the brushes at the end are gonna be um, where the high res is, is needed. So, uh, and as you can see, all of that so far took about 15 minutes, something like that. So these aren't complex models at all. And then with a combination of symmetry on or off, using just some of the brushes that, that we've got here at hand, we just literally started laying them out on the surface. And then it looks a bit repeatable. So if, if I was gonna spend some time on this, I would um, make wedge shaped alphas. So you don't have to just do a square. You could make it any shape that you want. So long and thin for around the sides. You could make it um, anything that, that, that works for the shape that you want to, to work onto. So I, I was a little bit aggressive there. You can see how deep the gouges are in the, in the, the front end of the, of the ship. So that, that probably, if I had more time on it, I probably wouldn't do it quite as aggressively. So just randomizing the images. And there you can see very, very quickly with those settings that I taught you at the start of the video, um, that's pretty much how I would do it. Um, if there's any specific part that needs to go really high res, then, then go high res and then remesh it back down if you need to with voxel remesh. But there you go. It's very, very simple to, to just add that surface detail and get a really cool effect um, with very little effort really. Um, be careful if you're going to export this because it will be high, but it's a great way to, just to get some really cool effects. I'm really excited to be able to tell you about a new iPad sculpting course that we're just coming to the end of creating. It's all about Nomad Sculpt and it will get you going with iPad sculpting even if you've never sculpted in the past ever. Let me just tell you a little bit about the course and the kind of things that you're going to find in there. We've broken the first section down into five easy sections over five hours. And the first one is just get sculpting. So this is where we get a quick overview of the interface, talk about left and right handedness, and then onto the navigation basics. The second chapter is all about the interface and it's the largest section. So it covers all of the interface panel, all of the things like display settings, layers, pressure, symmetry, painting basics and all about the left and right side and where everything's found on the interface. It finishes with a description of all the brushes and that's probably the largest section and where you're really gonna have to dig down deep to understand a large a chunk of brushes with lots of different uses. Then in section three, we dive straight into the sculpting again. So this time a little bit more in depth with how we would use the most common brushes, the basics of remeshing, dynamic topology, and how to use primitives. Section four gives us everything we need to know about masking and why we need masking and the brush settings for the masking and how to extract geometry off another piece of geometry, which is one of the most useful things. 
The final section is painting and materials and we look at how to add colour, how to use alphas and how to use stamps to make your surfaces of your models and creatures and characters look exciting. So once you've got through that five hours of core training and you've practiced and practiced and you know most of the tools and where they are and what they do, it's then time to take a look at making an actual character. So we're going to choose a little monster and we're going to work through everything from how to begin with references and then how to use things like um, primitives to block out the character and then how to break that scene down with all of the things you've learned in the first five chapters. If all that sounds exciting to you, then take a look in the description down below and have a look at how to get on our mailing list to make sure you're notified when the course is uploaded. We're very close to finishing it now. We've just got one or two things that we want to add to make it perfect. And then we're gonna be able to give you what we've promised over the last few months, which is a full instructive tutorial on how to use Nomad Sculpt on the iPad and get those creatures and characters and monsters that you've always wanted to get made and make sure you're trained to do it.